What is up friends? The final ever trailer for BoJack Horseman dropped just the other day, so here is my in-depth breakdown of what I think we're gonna see. Likely spoilers ahead for seasons one through six of BoJack. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now because you know I'm gonna be heavily covering BoJack's final season. The trailer opens on Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, where Hollyhock attends school and BoJack has just gotten a teaching position in the drama department. There's already a pretty fun sign gag here that says, MacArthur Fellows to the left of me, Nobel Laureates to the right, here I am, stuck in the middle town with you. This is a play on the Steeler Wheel song, stuck in the middle with you. We see Bojack getting ready for what I assume is his first day of teaching before heading to his classroom across campus on bike and writing his name on the whiteboard. Next, Bojack is driving through LA and stops at the Laugh Shack where he got his start as a stand-up. The only other times we see this location is back in season one and it's where he met Herb and possibly Charlotte as well. He walks behind the venue and there's actually an outline of Bojack's younger self on the brick wall. Next, Mr. Peanut Butter is on the set of Birthday Dad in what looks like a war scene and Bojack is one of the soldiers in the scene. So, even though Bojack moves to Connecticut, we know he ends up back in LA at some point. There's a quick shot of a smiley face breakfast before we see Todd sitting under a blanket with Maude, who he matched with on All About That Ace in the first half of the season. This scene makes me really happy. Maude is making Todd laugh really hard, and it looks like they're having an old school slumber party. It just makes me happy to see Todd happy. Next, we jump into an interesting pen and paper style animation of Diane, who's looking pretty down, which transitions to an actual shot of Diane looking equally down. At the end of the last eight episodes, Diane started taking her antidepressants and seemed to be moving towards happiness, but what we see of her so far in this trailer maybe hints at a bit of a step back. The shot of Diane also ends in a seemingly revelatory look on her face. Hard to speculate what it could exactly mean, but you know, it's possible that she's learning more about some of the likely upcoming allegations against Bojack. Next is Princess Carolyn and Judah at PC's house with Ruthie, who is wrapped in bubble wrap. Judah is doing some work and has a cooking tray taped to his suit, likely to prevent Ruthie from poking holes in it. Now, I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to ascertain from the PC-Judah relationship in this trailer, but I do see a lot of people sort of shipping them as a couple and honestly, I guess I'm not against that. They are kind of two of my favorite characters in the show. Then we see Bojack at some sort of house party looking very down, sitting on a couch as the entire party sort of just time lapses by him, which suggests his mind is preoccupied. And then, probably the most interesting moment in the trailer, we see Bojack sitting down with Biscuits Braxby in his house in LA, wearing a nice shirt and sweater wrapped around his shoulders. This scene, I think, directly ties into the voiceover in the trailer, so I'm gonna read the entire VO before we get to dissecting what's happening here. Bojack's voiceover says, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I look back at that other Bojack and I think, who is that? I've had a lot of what I thought were rock bottoms, only to discover another rockier bottom underneath. So obviously this first part of the voiceover represents the changes we've seen in Bojack over the first part of the season. He started to overcome his addiction and has grown into a thoughtful and caring person. We've seen many of his rock bottoms over the course of the show and even his rockier bottoms afterwards. You'd have thought that Sarah Lynn's death in season three would have been rock bottom, but then came the Gina incident in season five. The voiceover continues with, I used to feel like my whole life was an acting job, doing an impression of the people I saw on television, which was just a projection of a bunch of equally screwed up writers and actors. I felt like a Xerox of a Xerox of a person. And then we jump back to that Biscuits Braxby interview where she asks him, But not anymore? which leads to Bojack looking down and torn as seen here. There is so much to unpack here because the implication is that this entire speech is happening in a TV interview. The last time we saw Biscuits Braxby was season five when Bojack and Gina did their PR interview to smooth over the choking incident. So this seems to be Biscuits' specialty. Combine this with the tone of the speech and Bojack's outfit, this entire scene screams PR interview. I fully expect that this is happening after information about Bojack comes to light, likely as a result of Paige Sinclair's investigation. The major question is, is, what will these allegations include? This interview will be Bojack trying to show that he's a changed person and that the person who did those things in the past isn't who he is anymore. I think there's more implied within this speech. Bojack says that he used to feel like his whole life was an acting job, that he was doing an impression of people who he saw on television. And I think that in this moment, in this interview, He's doing that exact same thing. Hence the strain in his face when Biscuits asks, but not anymore. He's just doing the press and PR tour that other shitty people do too. We saw Hank Hippopolis do it and Vance Wagner as well. So the major question is, how does Bojack answer that question? His face does seem to showcase another revelatory expression similar to Diane earlier. I've gone on record saying that I think the show needs to end with Bojack taking responsibility for his actions. And although he is being open about his mistakes in what seems to be a televised interview, it doesn't really feel like he's taking responsibility. I expect that he'll realize this and that he'll address his actions accordingly. At least I hope he does. I have a feeling that this interview will come closer to the end of the season. After this, the trailer jumps to a series of 
really interesting scenes. We see PC walking into a bar slash venue where Judah's band is about to play. Every time I learn more about Judah, I love him more and more, and seeing him literally let his hair down to play guitar makes me really happy. I also just can't wait to hear what his music sounds like. Next, we see Todd in a red suit walking around a party talking to various guests. We see some of Todd's closest friends, Emily and her firefighter date, Mr. Peanut Butter, PC, Judah, Maude is in the background, though interestingly, no Bojack. I think that it's possible this is Todd's new apartment and he's having a housewarming party. It would be really fitting to have Todd finally get his own place at the end of the series since he's always lived on somebody else's couch. Next, we see Pickles kissing a sad looking Mr. Peanut Butter and this is a storyline I'm really curious about moving forward. I still feel like Mr. Peanut Butter marrying Pickles is representative of him having not learned from his past. I do think that they're a fun couple, but it's still the result of Mr. Peanut Butter rejecting what he had learned about himself over the course of season five. And I hope we get a satisfying exploration of this relationship. My gut says that they won't get married in the end. And as sad as that might be, it's also sort of a happy ending for Mr. Peanut Butter as a character. If a character learns and grows, that's reason to celebrate in my opinion. Next is another of the most intriguing shots in the trailer. Bojack's hands are shaking as he holds a letter addressed to him from Hollyhock. As you probably remember, the end of season 6A showed Hollyhock about to learn about some of Bojack's exploits in New Mexico from Pete Repeat, and Hollyhock is noticeably absent from this trailer. This might show that the only way Hollyhock is willing to communicate with Bojack after what she learned is via letter, and Bojack is clearly very afraid to read what she has to say. This is a much less serious observation, but Hollyhock lives in the Bradley Whitford dorms, and Whitford is a Wesleyan alum. Pretty silly choice. A wonderful guest star, though. Next, we see Diane, Todd, PC, and Ruthie sitting in the audience of what I believe to be a student play directed by Bojack, and next, Princess Carolyn is an empty seat reserved for Hollyhock. Also very worth noting that Diane does not look happy in this shot. We then see the end of his play with Bojack holding flowers among the student cast. One of those cast members is Tawny, Hollyhock's friend, which tells me that either Hollyhock hasn't told her about what she learned about her brother, or it's possible that she did tell Tawny and it didn't really bother her. We know Tawny was upset that the drama department was inactive, and based on her expression and the way she's looking at Bojack, she seems to greatly admire him. Next, we see Margot Martindale holding a knife to Todd's neck. I'm so curious what role she's going to play in this. Does she want revenge for the events of season three that sent her life spiraling? I guess we'll find out. Then we see an old Corvette slamming through the gates of Bojack's house. I do not recognize this car, but it could be Margot Martindale if she's on that quest for revenge, though the last car we saw her in was red. There's a lot of people with Bojack beef. Could it be Gina, Charlotte, Penny? Honestly, I have one theory. This car kind of matches a particular character's aesthetic, so my guess, Sarah Lynn's stepdad. The intrigue! Next we see another shot of young Bojack in his stand-up outfit, hopefully meaning that we get some more flashback content. My guess is that this comes in the episode where Bojack revisits the Laugh Shack. Then we see Bojack running down a long, fancy table, and I believe this is showcasing something Dr. Champ mentions in the first half of the season. He told me about that dream you keep having where you go to a dinner party. He runs across the table and it looks like he's fleeing a flood of tar, which was the focus of a metaphor Charlotte used about LA back in season one's The Telescope. See those tar pits? Hollywood's a real pretty town that smack on top of all that black tar. And the final shot shows Bojack trying to erase his name from the whiteboard only to realize he wrote it in Sharpie. It's a funny ending gag, but it's also clearly a metaphor for his past. There are some actions that you cannot erase, and Bojack is gonna have to reckon with that in the final eight episodes of the show. And thus ends the final trailer for Bojack Horseman at least until we get Todd Camino in 10 years. <laughs> I genuinely cannot wait for these final episodes, but I'm also really not ready for the show to be over. The tone of the trailer sort of gives me hope, and I know that Raphael Bob Waxberg sees the show as optimistic, which I do too. I've gone on record saying I don't think Bojack will take his own life or die in the end of the show, but honestly, at this point, anything could happen. There's a lot going on in these final eight episodes, and I fully trust that we're going to get a challenging and satisfying ending that will make us all not only reflect on the series, but probably reflect on ourselves as well. And that's where I want to pass it off to you. How did you like the final trailer for BoJack Horseman? Was there anything that I missed in this trailer? Please let me know below in the comments. If you like this video, do not forget to comment, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for my coverage of BoJack's final season. I can't believe I'm saying that. Peace. Johnny! Two